Hi all at the Christian Resources Exhibition. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you about Renew Wellbeing. Before we do that, I'd just like to lead us in prayer because prayer is a massive part about what we're doing. This is a, a seminar about mental health and the church and the things that I've discovered from my own experience, my own lived experience and what we've been doing as a charity over the last few years is that prayer is absolutely vital. So just take a moment with me, if you will. We're meditating on a phrase that is about his name being wonderful, counsellor, from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. So just take a moment to breathe that in as we steady ourselves to think about mental and emotional well-being. He is the wonderful counsellor. And then in the mornings at our um, Renew Centres, we use the first four verses of Psalm 103 and they go like this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. So just take a moment in the quiet and think of his name, to speak out his name. What name are you thinking of? What characteristic of God? In our Renew Spaces, we'd encourage people to speak that out in a word or a sentence. And then it says, bless the Lord, O my soul and forget not all his benefits. So we do the same thing again, but this time, what are you thankful for? What are the benefits of this day? Just in a word or a sentence, thank him. He forgives all our sins, so we take a moment each day to come to the cross to be forgiven, to start the day fresh and clean. Thank you, Lord. The psalm then says he heals all our diseases and this is a tricky one. We're not always seeing everybody healed in the way we would like to, but we believe he is the healer and we bring ourselves, our friends, the stranger, body, mind and spirit and lift, leave their names at the throne of grace. Do that now. Then it says in the psalm, he redeems our lives from the pit. So to redeem is to rescue, to buy back and the pit is any hopeless situation. So just in a sentence now in the quiet, just bring him a situation, global, national or close to home, that feels hopeless and ask him to rescue. And we take a bit longer over that than I'm doing today, but the section finishes with this beautiful image. He crowns us with love and compassion. He loves you. He is compassionate towards you. Receive his love. So just take a moment in the quiet and receive his love. Thank you, Lord, that you love me. You are compassionate towards me today. And in our renewed spaces, I would then say, or whoever was leading would say, right, the kettle's on, the activities are out, or you can stay in this space of quiet as long as you like. The door is always open. And that's the story that I'm gonna take you into of these quiet shared spaces where it's okay not to be okay that are springing up all over the UK, even during a global pandemic, maybe particularly during the global pandemic, that hopefully by the time you're listening to this, we're coming out the other side of. So what is Renew Wellbeing? So just to define terms first, renewing, um, it's been a really important concept to me because of my own journey to be renewed by being transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know how in Isaiah 40, he talks about um, this being renewed, uh, our strength being renewed as we wait on the Lord. And well-being is a really great term. It's, it's a better translation of the word shalom, I think, than peace. And it's not about being well. You can have well-being and not be well. And we use this term within our charity rather than mental health or mental and emotional health. I don't mind talking about mental health. We've all got mental health, just like we've all got physical health. But the moment you start talking about mental health, some people switch off and think it's not for them. They think there's this sort of bracket of people who are mentally unwell and therefore mental health is sort of synonymous with mental unwellness. And uh, I want people to understand about well-being, being something that is at the very heart of the gospel for all of us. It's where there's a level playing field where we all have mental health and we all have needs for well-being. So renewing well-being is about renewing, bringing good practices for better mental health for all right out into the open. And I really believe the church can be and should be and could be at the heart of this. In fact, we're beginning to see that. 
Um, so just to look at that term a little bit more, you'll see um, on the slide that you're looking at now, this word well-being, at the top of the screen, there's um, like a seesaw and on one side of the seesaw are your challenges and on the other side are your resources. Now this is a medicalised model, I got it from the Journal of Wellbeing and I'm not mad keen on it to be honest. Uh, the reason why is because when I had a breakdown, on the resources end of my seesaw was the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and all the resources of heaven and I still got out of balance. So I had shame and I had guilt and I didn't know how to get it fixed and I felt that a Christian shouldn't feel like that. And the fact remains that one in four people, even before this pandemic, were struggling with their mental and emotional health. And many, if not all, were not looking for the answers within the local church. And for quite a few people, the church and their faith meant that they felt unable to go and ask for the help that they needed. Because there is help to be had and, and we do need extra resources and medication and talking therapies are, are all really good. But it's not as simple as that, is it? We have spiritual and emotional needs as well. And I do believe the gospel has some part to play, a big part to play in bringing renewing well-being. So at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the five ways to well-being. This was the New Economics Foundation, a piece of research uh, that was done about 10 years ago. Um, and with uh, the government support, the New Economics Foundation asked lots of questions and found these five things. So getting active, taking notice, giving, uh, learning and connecting all as good things to help with your well-being. And when I saw those, and actually they're spelled clang if you put them in one order, connect, learn, get active, take notice, give. Mental health teams everywhere are using them. I thought, wow, that's what the church had been doing for centuries. That's what we do. And so having said, sometimes it's hard to be mentally and emotionally unwell and be in a, in a church. I also believe, on the other hand, it's exactly what the local church is designed for, to be these communities of well-being. So my own story, um, my journey has been an uh, interesting one because I was a teacher for 20 years, primary school teacher, and I loved every minute of it. I loved it. I've got three kids and a husband and I work full time and I was leading in the church. And I didn't really spot that I was overdoing it until one day my cup, which was full to overflowing, just emptied out overnight. And I found myself unable to get out of bed, no voice, struggling with mental and emotional, just fatigue. It was a burnout experience, but a big one. And, and instead of going and getting some help, I just felt like I should be able to pull myself together. And I isolated myself from friends who were concerned for me because I couldn't answer their questions. And I, I didn't like people praying for me all the time because I thought if I get better, I've got to go back to my life and I can't do my life. And God was too kind to just give me an instant back into my life. He was trying to teach me how to live well in my own skin. Not because he, he didn't bring it about. I brought it on myself. Now, please don't hear me wrong. I am not saying that mental and emotional health issues are things we bring on ourselves. Mine was burnout. It was caused by not living well in my own skin. For many people, the lights go out for no reason. You can suddenly have an onset of illness, of depression, of anxiety, and there's many, many reasons for it. And sometimes no reasons at all. And so having, having an understanding as a church, a little bit of how we look after ourselves, what well-being looks like for us, and how we stop trying to fix other people and start trying to live well as a community alongside the quarter of the population who are not okay and have some prevention going on for those people who are still okay and need to look after their well-being to continue that. What we ended up with, um, I sort of had this dream because when I wasn't well, one of the things that had helped me was sort of taking the cup and holding my cup in the morning. I read a wonderful book called The Cup of Our Life by Joyce Rupp, R U P. You might know of this six-week course in inner practices. And <clears throat> I found I'd had a dearth of this sort of inner life stuff. I hadn't spent enough time as a Christian um, thinking about my inner life, the offstage life, the under the surface stuff. And so when I wasn't well, I had more time to dig into the Psalms, to begin to breathe more deeply. Contemplative prayer became really important. I'd sit still with my cup in the morning and hold it and know that I was held in God's hands. And that became like an image for me of, um, yeah, of, of what well-being looks like. Empty or full, broken or not, I am held in God's hands. And so as my cup began to fill up and I began to meet lots of other people who were also not well and maybe the sort of shadow people in the church car park, you know, not managing to get in there and 
thinking, wow, if there's all these people who really need hope and these inner slow practices that had begun to bring me back to life, to be honest, I had heard God's voice in the middle of it saying, Ruth, I couldn't love you anymore. I'll never love you any less. And that was when I was doing nothing for him. And that was when I was born again, again. This is the gospel, that he loves us just the way we are. And it is okay not to be okay. I really think that phrase there, that is not a Christian phrase, but is the very heart of the gospel of Jesus, because he's saying, none of us are okay. None of you are okay without the big okayness of God wrapping us in his love and forgiveness. And in that, we don't need to try and fix each other because he holds us. And so I dreamed of a place where I could do some hobbies because they'd been really helpful to me to learn to be a human being again, do some of my prayer rhythms, so things with the psalm and the, the Lord's Prayer, like I did with you at the beginning, that thing became really important to take that psalm each day, to take some rhythms and habits, to rewind the day with God, it's called examine, at the end of each day. And I wanted to share those habits and practices with my church family. By this time I'd come out of teaching and I'd come into being full-time leader of the church. That's a story for another day. In fact, it's a story that's in my book, which I've got over here somewhere. Let me just grab one so I can uh, show you. Um, this book, Slow Down, Show Up and Pray, which is um, out with Authentic Media, uh, tells the story of, of what happened for me when I wasn't well, how I came back to health. The story of Renew 37, which is the first cafe I'm going to tell you about, the story of how the charity grew, and then also the manual is in there to set up that uh, a centre for yourself. So you could get this book, work through it as a book group or whatever, and, um, and set up a centre. So basically, God gave us this space on the high street in West Bridgeford in Nottingham, where I was leading the church, which was just a little cafe style space next door to an existing cafe. And the ladies who run the cafe are not Christians, but they're what I call people of peace. You know, from Luke chapter 10, where Jesus says, look for a person of peace and stick with them. Um, and they asked me to talk to people who were lonely. They said to me, Ruth, you know, we're really worried about isolation and you're a minister. Will you talk to people? So amazing, beautiful opportunity. And then the unit next door came up for let. So we knocked through between the two units. One side's just a normal cafe. This side looks like a cafe, but it feels like a shared front room. The church paid half the rent, the cafe paid half the rent. We put a prayer room in there with the door left open into the cafe style space. So people could either just go to the normal cafe and they could just keep running as a cafe business. And if you've ever tried going into a cafe when you feel lonely or isolated, it can be even more lonely when you come out because everyone's gone with someone they know. And so the idea in our side was when you walk through those doors, you are welcomed into a space where you can join in any activity. And at every table, there's something for your well-being. It might be a jigsaw or some colouring in or, uh, you know, that mindful colouring, colouring in sounds, sounds a bit childish. But you know that it, it, we love it. it. It calms us down. Making furniture, furniture restoration, basically anything that people are doing for their well-being, anyone can bring a hobby, share a hobby and be present. That's the first principle. It is that simple. So being present, which is the first principle, um, on this picture you can see on the slide now, this is not the inside of Renew 37, which is the first place we got. It's not a TARDIS. This is uh, because what God showed us after we'd done the first one was that it doesn't necessarily have to be a lovely cafe space and it doesn't have to be every day of the week like we were at Renew 37. It can be in an existing church building or a public space. Um, as long as you can set the space up to feel safe for the most anxious person. So the picture on the screen, that is actually um, a picture of St Giles in Northampton, which is a big Anglican church. They've been one of our most successful projects, replicating themselves six times into other churches. Even though I didn't think this was supposed to be in the church building, God had other ideas. It can be in a cafe style space, it can be um, in, a, in a sort of borrowed or, or hired space. Uh, or it can be in a church building. The idea is you, you show up when you say you'll show up at least two hours a week with a couple of hosts looking after it. No them and us, hosts and regulars. You wouldn't know who was who, but the hosts are keeping it safe. And that's just, that's the space. It, it's just a, a hosted space with the kettle on and some activities to do and you show up and you make sure you're being present. And then the second thing, the second P is um, so and I've asked you a few questions that will come up on the screen, you know, where are you being present already and and, and in what way is that going to work for people 
who are struggling with their mental health. If you don't know, ask people who you know to be struggling. How do you get on with all the stuff we do as a church? Would this work better for you? Second principle is to be in partnership with mental health services. So this, this was something that happened for us where right early on I wanted advice from people. When I'd been the minister of the church, I'd been moaning, to be honest, to mental health services about care in the community for many of our guys that really weren't getting enough support. And it was because services are oversubscribed. So instead of just moaning, I asked one of these ladies, what could we do about it? She was an OT, an occupational therapist in the mental health team of the council. And we began talking about these safe spaces where people could come and you you know they'd be safe and you know there'd be something to do for their well-being. And I began to describe what was in my heart, somewhere that felt like a front room. But I said, but there'd be prayer because prayer's a really important bit of it. And this lady from mental health services, who's an atheist, said, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. And actually, we're supposed to tick this spirituality box and we don't really know how to do it. So if you could say these spaces were safe, they weren't going to be coercive or manipulative, then we could signpost people to come to them. And I said, yes, and could we signpost people back to you when we're out of our depth? So we don't do rubbish mental health care on the cheap. This is a two-way partnership. And so that developed uh, there at Renew 37, and it's called 37, by the way, because it's 37 Abbey Road. But since then, people have gone for the place on their street and the number on their street or the name of their street. And we've begun this calling the Renew Centres different things around numbers and names, which has been great fun. Um, and 37 is a great psalm. Do not fret, do not fret, do not fret. It's like God played this game with us. So coming back to the partnerships, you can also get partnerships with people with lived experience and mental ill health. Listen to them. They're your experts. Partnerships with local businesses like we did with the Tiffin Tea House. Um, those sort of partnerships with us as a charity. Why would you partner with us? Well, because as a national charity, we can then learn from each other. We can find out what is best practice. We can hold ourselves to something that is simple and good. And when we can develop a, a national partnership then with mental health services, with local GPs, with other uh, mental health organisations and see well-being improved. So where have you got your partners? The question's coming up on the screen. And do you know people in mental health services that you could work with or that might want to help you to get this space safe? And then the third P, the most important principle of a Renew Space is being prayerful. So back to my early days, you walked into that space, Renew 37, and I knew I wanted to do those rhythms of prayer. The things I talked about, you know, holding the cup, meditating on a psalm, just getting a rhythm of prayer going on. But what I didn't want was it just to be for the initiated. Like I'd gone to find out about these rhythms of prayer when I wasn't well and I'd had to drive like 500 miles to beautiful Pembrokeshire to Faldy Brennan which you might know about and Northumbria community and I'd found these beautiful rhythms of prayer that were really helpful but I'd had to drive a long way and I thought I need a church why is this not on the high street why cannot everybody get access to these lovely simple rhythms of prayer like when you get a loaf of bread you could also learn how to pray. Not get prayed for, because that could create dependency, more learn how to pray. We are the people of prayer, right? The people of God are the people of prayer. And we know that the practice of the presence of God is the thing that brings us well-being and peace. So teaching people to pray, we found to be so much better in this context. Not that we never pray for people again, but when it's got renew on the label, renew well-being, you know that you're going to come into a rhythm of prayer and be invited to pray for yourself in a word or a sentence, just simple, like I did at the beginning. So each session, we were open every day, four days a week, and we still are five years later. Um, morning, noon and at the end of the session. If you're open just once a week for two hours, middle, uh, beginning, middle and end of the session, punctuated with prayer. So you go around the tables where people are doing activities and say, I'm going to do prayer now. If you want to join in, you don't have to. So the cafe space, any faith and none, no proselytising. But if you move through into the prayer space, we're going to be honest about why we do this stuff. We're going to introduce you to the one who can do something about your well-being and invite you to learn to pray for yourself. So being prayerful, have you got rhythms and habits of prayer yourself that could help with your well-being and that you could imagine sharing with a neighbour or a friend? This is the story of Renew Wellbeing. This is what a Renew Space looks like. And to take the story further, um, I gave up the day job being a minister about three and a half years ago, back in September, and set up a little charity, Renew Wellbeing at God's Call, to be able to help other churches set up these spaces. 
that I believed them to be like, I'd seen this picture God had given me of like a battlefield and people were just you know, dying on this battlefield. And then I saw these spaces and as I pointed to them, people set up picnic mats and this picnic was sort of filled from above and people were getting up off the battle floor and joining in the picnics. And I believe God was saying, I'm turning the battlefield of despair into a picnic site of hope. And the church, the local church, making these quiet shared spaces like these little picnic mats with the goodies of well-being, just being able to share the simple habit of being present, being prayerful and partnering with mental health services is helping us to see hope restored in small ways into our churches and our communities because we, we all need this. And so by lockdown in March of uh, 2020, we had 52, 53 cafes open and we were gutted when they all shut. And we thought that was the end and we'd help churches all across the country get their spaces open. But actually what happened over the, over the nine months when we were locked down the 10 months, it was that we tripled our reach. Over 150 churches working with us now. We put all our training online. I wrote the book and um, we took on some more staff to look after the north, south, east and west to coordinate what God was up to and so we can link better. And so we're really excited to see that God is renewing well-being right across the United Kingdom and maybe beyond. And that this simple story of hope to slow down, show up and pray is what any church can do. If your church has got three people in it and you can put the kettle on, you can do this. If your church has got 3,000 people in it and the loneliest people and the most isolated people might still be feeling lonely, you can have loads of these groups. This is a way for us to link together to learn better how to see shalom, well-being restored in our time. Wouldn't that be exciting to know? I, I wrote a poem when I was um, in the early days of setting up Renew and God gave me this and I'll read this to you as we finish. I can see a place where all are welcome, where family is beyond blood, where those who thought they had the least to say, least notice taken, become most loved, most honoured. A place where all seek God, all seek and find his beautiful presence and become viral carriers, infected with his sweet love and grace. A place where we all acknowledge ourselves as broken and no labels are necessary other than human and loved. Where sin is acknowledged and left behind and sadness is allowed to be what it is for as long as it needs to be. Where honesty is the native tongue and being transcends doing. Where sitting quietly with yourself and God is valued as much as busying yourself with others. Where the other is seen through the eyes of the God who made them and are loved with his compassion where simplicity, gentleness and joy live and God is not privatised into meetings, where we become all of us, young and old, co-creators with him of small things of beauty and large systems of justice, of little works of art and big works of courage, a place to dream, to imagine, to dare, a place to rest and pause and be, a lump of yeast of kingdom life, carrying the DNA of Christ to every home and workplace, a quiet shared place where it's okay not to be okay, where being present, prayerful and in partnership breed hope and love and peace, where one place become many places, a web of well-being across a nation. I can see a place. Lord, make it so for those who are listening today that you would restore well-being habits in their own lives and in our church lives, that we would become beacons of well-being, prophetic, living out places of well-being that we would see shalom restored in our day, in Jesus' name. Now, if you'd like to join in, then uh, connect with us on our website. You can join a webinar or you can read the book and that's another way to join in. Um, and then you can help yourself to the training that's on the website. Just sign up with us at mandy at renewwellbeing.org.uk and then we'll get you started on your own adventure with your Renew Centre. Uh, if you want to read the book and do like a book group thing and then do a one-off training on a Saturday, we're now offering that on a Saturday morning so that your church can join in too. Just get in touch with me at ruth at renewwellbeing.org.uk and we can talk about it further or help yourself to this that Authentic are bringing out, Authentic Media. Um, thank you so much for um, listening in and if nothing else, please pray with us for the well-being of this nation and many more. 
and take that habit if, habit, if you like, of the, the cup, holding the cup and meditating on a phrase from the psalm. You are very welcome to join this journey with us. And um, may the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine on you and give you his peace. Amen. Nothing beats sitting on it, hearing it, tasting it, wearing it, handling it, trying it, comparing it, Copier produces a thousand copies for four pounds. The Riso Digital Printer produces a thousand copies for one pound twenty at 140 pages per minute. Discussing it. Interesting thing about this century is a very difficult breed on a very small site. Buying it. Recommending it. I definitely recommend it. It's always good to have resources. And yeah, this is very resourceful, so it's a great place to be. Nothing beats being here. Buy your tickets online now. CREonline.co.uk forward slash tickets.